see the deeper, right, the shallow aspect of some breathing is that it helps let go of, uh, like, essentially muscular tension, where your mind is causing you to hold on to tension, which sounds shallow, but it's quite useful, right? To be honest, let go of that. Um, then it starts sort of going deeper and deeper, then you can start letting go of sort of emotional things, which creates not switches in your personality, but switches in how you react to things, yeah? So if you're someone who stores a lot of anger, what that means is you tend to always see life through the lens of anger. So on a simple level, you're more likely to get frustrated, but more easy than someone else. But on a more complex level, every event you have in life, you will experience from a different standpoint. And if you tend to see it from that direction of sort of wood elemental energy, you tend to view that situation from a position of conflict, if that makes sense. So you'll always be subconsciously looking for the adversity within that sort of situation. Whereas you're somebody who's viewing it more from a position of sadness and sort of grief and sort of fragility, that whenever that's, if you were to look at that same situation, it would feel more like you would have a caution as to how this could be damaging or saddening or causing you some loss at a certain stage. You tend to be more defensive from it. And every situation you have in your life, you will view from a different position. And depending on your elemental makeup and what experiences you have and what energy in the body, you'll always experience it through one of these distortions. So what happens is as you start to release these things and let these things go, your standpoint for viewing circumstances changes. So what that appears as is a person's personality is different, but it's really not the case. All it is is their perception of event is changing. And hopefully, you're trying to move somewhere a bit more centered. If it's making it worse, something's going on. So you're trying to move somewhere a little bit more centered with your standpoint. And then what happens when you continue to release those things is that's when you'll hit the resistance spots. That takes time. Some of you will find it straight away, but you feel like, oh, fucking hell, that doesn't want to let go. The reason is because it's wrong to split human consciousness into two parts, because they're one unified whole, right? But it's easiest to understand it that way. You have your acquired nature and your congenital nature. Your congenital nature, your sort of true self that's inside, wants to experience anything from a neutral position, like a newborn baby or something like that, and wants to experience it neutral. Your acquired nature, has a vested interest in maintaining all of its imbalances because its job is to give you a personality. I mean, babies don't have much of a personality. Whatever people say is like a potato with a face. Right? So, <laughs> I'm interesting. But as they grow, they develop these layers and the persona. And, you know, and the acquired nature wants to maintain that sense of self. And, of course, the Eastern art's job was to drop that sense of self because that sense of self although interesting, and what makes people interesting, was also what is causing you to see things from a distorted standpoint. Yeah? So as these layers start to fade away, what will happen is your acquired nature has a vested interest in keeping certain aspects of your nature. Because if you've had some big event in your life that's stored here, that has caused you to view every other situation of a similar nature for 30 more years from that standpoint, well, that's going to have made a massive change on your personality who you are as a person, the decisions you've made in life, and basically everything, like your entire life has come from that one event because all of the time you've seen everything that's happened from that standpoint. If you're going to let that go, that's like a big loss for your acquired nature because it has to unfold all of the different things that have happened to you in those last 30 years and all of those decisions and then all of the motives for everything you do that's come from that position. So that's a hugely opening feeling of feeling really all of a sudden quite all um, fragile to everything that's taking place around you because you've just got to unfold your entire nature and that's essentially what they're trying to do through the Eastern Arts. So what happens if you use something like some breathing is you hit those spots and you go, no, nah, fuck that, I'm staying this person. It's easier for me to think that all my anger was right for my entire life rather than accept that I've been a dickhead. <laughs> so it won't let go. So what you don't do is force it. Because that's why people, when they do things like you hear of, uh, as often they lump everything under Kundalini sickness, which is a bit unfair to be honest, but that's become the collective name for kind of anything, or dragon sickness in the Taoist arts. And often what's happened is someone has created the forceful act of letting something go through a rushing up of energy and it's just gone Pleh! and unraveled their whole existence and then they've essentially you have a mental breakdown because you have like an <laughs> entire process of seeing the stupidity of your entire life and who you are over a long period of time, right? Now essentially what they're experiencing is the stupid nature of human beings, which is true, we're all kind of ridiculous, but what you don't want to do is experience all of your stupidity in one second, because that can be quite damaging for the brain and the nervous system. 
So what you want is to experience it over a very slow period of time so that it's amusing rather than traumatic. Yeah? So what we do is you touch that area and if there's resistance, step away from it. Step away. And that's why people, so many people like do things, they're like, I can feel something, I just want it out, I want to get it out. And I'm like, ah, leave it alone. No, I feel bad. Get it out, get it out. And lots of people say, no, keep it. Like, yeah, but it's bad for me. Yeah, keep it in. Because I know if you <laughs> let that out, the body is resisting, so all your life's going to go, Bleh. Whereas if you carry on going to other areas and keep working through gently and use your breath and you just carry on with the process, there will come a time when your body is ready to let go of that because your mind knows that it's not a dangerous time for you to let go of that substance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so this is kind of the safe way to progress through your mind and through your life. You can't force anything to be let go. I'm going to simplify it, don't force anything. But essentially that's the mechanics behind why that's taking place. Yeah. Every decision you've ever made, I've ever made, anyone's ever made, has been wrong. That's basically the standpoint of Taoism. Because you've not seen or experienced anything from a neutral position. You've always seen it through the filters of your mind. Uh, so you can't get anything right, basically. We can't. We're just fumbling our way through life. And what we're trying to do is make that fumbling as efficient as we can. Yeah. So something like some breathing, essentially, at, at first appears quite shallow. Because you're like, oh, that's nice. Ah, tension gone. But then the deeper you go into it, then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and starts letting go. Emotional information can go to two places. Probably more, but for me too, right? It can go to emptiness, which is a release. Yeah, I mean, emptiness isn't some weird mystical void that opens up and sucks things away. What it essentially means is a release of that point that energy, that information, that line, that transmission, that vibration force through into a spot where it no longer contains any emotional or karmic ties onto your body, right? Where that, that's essentially a release. The other place that it can go is into a point where it touches on your awareness and then once again that cycle of vested interest back into the emotion kicks back in and then it's not gone, all it's done, if anything, is fueled. So if you want to take um, something out of the body, if I start releasing it and there it comes, or it comes this anger welling up, or I'm getting pissed off, there's no way you're going to let go of that. Because what's happening at that particular moment is your mind's going, there's my anger, what's that called? What's that from? What's that anger from? Oh, it's from that. Oh, yeah, that did piss me off. Yeah, you're right, that's annoying. And then gradually all that happens is that fueling your emotional state. Yeah, so as soon as that happens, step off of it. Just relax, go to something else, and let it go through back to stillness. So you never want to experience any of your issues coming through. That's why, like, you some people have emotional releases here, screaming or crying or on courses and things like that. I let them do it for a bit, and then I go over and stop them. Uh, and I'm different from a lot of teachers, because a lot of teachers will just let people do it. Let them thresh it out. But it's not letting anything go. It's creating a cathartic feeling of, ah, I feel good. But it's only reinforcing that feeling, because that person that has that emotional release will continue having that same emotional release for 30 years. You'll never see people go through it. It's the same person crying, it's the same person screaming, it's the same person shouting in the corner. It doesn't do them any good. So what you do is you step them back from it, and then you just let it release energetically, and then what you find is that person, in a short space of her time, stops being the crying person, stops being the shouting person, and they've moved on. And if you want to see that pattern, go to lots of other groups where they have lots of emotion releases. People won't be wrong. You know, and it's because you have to take that experience and take it to emptiness. And that was always Taoism's way, which is why everything is energy work, yeah? The diagram I draw of Sun. Consciousness, physicality, energy, right? Everything transfers through to energy to release out the body. So Sun is the energetic release of conscious and physical tensions and blockages out of the body. Because if you, like, physical stretching will release physical tensions, to a point, right? This is why all these studies come up with stretching doesn't increase your flexibility, which is like bollocks, and they're all over the internet lately. But for a lot of people, obviously they're stretching in the resistance, so physical tension isn't very easy to let go that way. Mental tensions, the focus on the releases, that's not easy to let go, because you have a conscious connection to it. But when both of these things touch the energy realm, essentially there's a, an air of kind of impersonal nature about energy, if you know what I mean? It's not. It's not connected to your mind particularly, and it's not holding you back in your body. So when that lets go, then the body, the flexibility just goes up, which is when they go and these people soft, and the flexibility opens up, and they let go of their emotions, and the mind changes. And that's why you have the sped up sort of change of a person's 
mental nature.